Okay. So welcome to you all um, for this edition. This is actually part two of our Rejuvenate My Brain series. And I know a lot of you are, are here or, or, and are going to be watching as my special guest for these two, um, first, the first two parts, which, which are all about the immune system. And I know, and you know, we were talking yesterday about the, you know, the panic and the overwhelm across the planet and I wanted to just give you a little bit of, help you create a little island of calm in the midst of you know, all the, the media and the uproar um, that's going back and forth. And um, welcome, Connie. Right. Um, and just uh, the, the tools I'm teaching you, um, I want you to really take in because these are tools for a lifetime. And one of the reasons I developed the Rejuvenate My Brain is because when people were working with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, that, that there were lots of basic principles that I didn't have a chance to talk about. Oh, welcome, Julianne. So we've got Germany as well on the call, yeah. Um, and I just feel that the time is now that makes it so important to keep our inner stability so that we can be these little bubbles of light. Um, and let me know, somebody's giving me a chat and, um, oh yeah. Um, and, um, and I've been requested to ask you guys to mute um, so that we keep the recording as clean as possible. And then we'll just unmute because I will be asking you questions and we will be having a Q&A. And this first part, which is what our guests are invited to, will hopefully not take more than an hour. And then after that, we say goodbye to you. Um, and we continue with our private Rejuvenate My Brain series, which is a six week long program. Oh, there's Brian. Welcome, Brian. Um, so let me see see where, where I'm going to do kind of a little bit of a PowerPoint, um, a little bit of a refresher. Those of you who missed um, the first part of the immunity, inner immunity series, then um, just email me if you don't have a link in it, um, and I'll send you the link. But this is kind of going back to a recap, which I realized I didn't cover last time. And I just did a second radio show, um, KC, KCSB. Um, Santa Barbara Radio, where we talked about um, the history of why we've got so off track. And what I want to help you do is get back on track so that we can keep you know, growing our joy grooves and um, reclaiming our health, which is absolutely about our joy and holding that higher frequency. Um, and I know, Shannon, you're busy in a, in a hospital and you're holding this frequency well, your hospital co-workers, and you're doing a phenomenal job with that. So thank you on behalf of us all, yeah, because you're representing a, um, a very um, under-supported profession at the moment, aren't you? And just, you know, I, I, I really love the fact that you show up with these so fully um, to these, these, um, this program. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you from all of us. So let's just um, start with, uh, I'll just do a tiny, a little bit of a recap. Um, um, and the reason I call this Rejuvenate My Brain, hopefully you can all see it, give me a thumbs up if you can see this. Yeah. It, it's that, um, and it's, I call it the medicine of the soul. The earth element in Chinese medicine is about your physical body. And um, just the recap, rejuvenate my face, which a lot of you have taken with me, is about the fire element, which is about reaching out and connecting, which is huge for the immune system. And the birth dance, which some of you are, are still in, is about um, the yin, the water element, which is about going deep, deep into ourselves and our core and melting old patterns that are keeping us frozen from being our best selves. So, you know, that's fire element, water element, which are very balancing. And now we're working with earth, which is absolutely about nurturing and loving your physical body and doing your very best to keep it healthy. Um, so that's why I call it functional medicine. We're using neuroscience, a lot of brain science that is actually 
um, which is thrilling for me, it's actually supporting and validating a lot of the ancient Chinese wisdom and modern nutrition we're doing. Yep, through the foundation of the soul. Then you'll see why um, when we can go a little bit further. Somebody's not on mute, but needs to be on mute. I can hear papers shuffling. Um, so let's... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, we had someone not on mute last time and that was pretty funny, but um, try and be on mute. So here, this is just to remember that underneath everything, even with modern medicine, which is about, you know, take this pill or do this procedure, that there is a soul and the more we work with supporting our souls, that's really the frequency <coughs> of health, the real deep frequency of health. Um, and so I gave you a couple of little things in the last two weeks. Um, those of you who know, oh, it's, it's not even showing up. Oh, no, I'm going to go back. Um, it's not even showing my picture. Oh, well. Um, and anything quick that um, a couple of sentences or anything that you want to share um, that you've been working with in the last two, couple of weeks to boost your immunity work with some of the things that we've been talking about um, in terms of boosting your immune system from last time. Anybody have anything a little? Because we want this to be, we want to be able to celebrate and we want to, if you remember why we do celebrate first, it's to get the, our frequency uplifted and that's what supports our immune system. You know, before I haven't really focused tremendously on the immune system, but there's an urgency now where I'm just kind of encouraging you to see that any work you've already done um, has actually been going directly towards your immune system. Yeah, it hasn't been in vain. So anyone want to share? A couple of people? I will. Yeah, Shannon. Um, so I've been using the um, fragrances some some of the ones that um, the eucalyptus and things like that and um, just been really focusing on meditation calming um, and doing the core um, what I call the main central in Jinchen Jutsu is like you know meditation using the chakras um, uh -huh. focusing on them um, so it's been good. Thank you. Great, great. And and for you to do that while you're in the hospital, um, I think it's really important, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And I think yesterday, if I can say, you took away something that you said you were going to use in the hospital. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> the, <laughs> the imaginary protector. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think it could be real, like, because it's, for me, it's a spiritual thing and you know just trusting that there is a protector working with me and and helping me even in my immune system um i just visualize sometimes my um angels helping me with and god you know just helping me with my at the cellular level to boost my immune system and so it seems to be helpful right well done and that's you know you're bringing in this higher power and we're going to be going into that um, with some of the principles. Um, it's saying that my internet connection is unstable. So I'm sorry about that if I kind of go in and out. Uh, thank you, Shannon. And anybody else? Just want one more quick um, share. Anybody else who's been practicing? Lisa. Yes. Um, so I'm with Shannon. I um, am... Uh, pretty good at doing a daily practice in the morning and evening and throughout the day um, of just cleansing, spiritual cleansing, uh, bringing in light, uh, prayer, um, and uh, throughout the day just clearing. And, um, and also I have uh, herbal support from my herbalist and, um, and also uh, parasympathetic additional parasympathetic support from um, uh, my chiropractic team, which uses, um, uh, uses uh, 
oh, I forget the system right now, but but that's basically what it is, is parasympathetic balancing. So I'm using all the resources that I have available. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and this is really um, underscores the fact that so many um, you know, media communications, and we talked a little bit about this last time where I kind of vented like, you know, Chinese medicine is so excellent for this and there are so many wonderful tools. Why are we being told there's nothing we can do except wash our hands, you know, and stay isolated? Um, it's like uh, what this, uh, I'm, I'm kind of throwing up my hands right now. This, uh, what I want to support you all in is being as empowered as possible. And there has never been a more important time to, to claim your power around your health and your immune system. So well done. Thank you, both of you. Um, let me see if I can shift this. Uh, let me see if I can. There we go. Okay, so, um, so what we're wanting to do is, yes, say thank you, celebrate, and, you know, again, celebrate even tiny little things you're doing. If you're managing to, you know, in that social isolation, shift a little and go inward and be more introspective and take more time for yourself. That's a huge celebration right there. Yeah. Um, so um, this is, you know, the, the basic premise of the Rejuvenate My Brain program, which is that your biography creates your biology. So if there's old trauma patterns, it can be running you. Yeah. Um, especially around this pandemic. I um, worked with, I've worked with a few people and when we've looked at their fear and we've rolled back, we've seen that yes, there's the fear they're taking on from the world, anxiety and fear, but what's getting a foothold into them is old fear patterns that they've been carrying where they didn't feel safe and secure from perhaps early on. And once they've resolved that, I've seen this consistently, suddenly it's almost like the bubble, you know, that their bubble around them, I don't know if you can see me, but this great big bubble of um, health fills back up again and they're not contracted. And so just notice, this is something I just want you to kind of write down, notice when you shrink, notice if you read um, news or hear news on the radio or on the internet, that causes you to shrink inside and contract and catch yourself and decide which reality you're going to choose. Are you going to choose the reality of fear where it's being kind of whipped up to a hysteria in some places and people are, are really worried and a lot of people are genuinely, you know, of course we are genuinely worried um, about other people and health and sickness and what can we do to shift that fear to come back to ourselves and hold our own, literally our own joy grooves. You know, some of you know what I'm talking about, where we're shifting from the trauma grooves to the joy grooves. Um, and we'll be doing some of that today. Um, so that you are not contributing to the fear and we the weakening of the immune systems. You're holding that space where people around you connect up with you and they go, oh, and they're remembering this ancient knowledge, cellular knowledge, you know, of your mitochondria that know how to be healthy and have a natural immunity. I hope you can still hear me because it still tells me my internet is unstable. Let's see. You can hear me. Okay, great. Great. Okay. So um, here again, and you've heard me say this many times, some of you, but connection transforms physiology. Yes, they want us to socially distance, but what we're doing here, um, and you know, I'm encouraging you to do as much as you can. You know, this may be the time to reconnect with old friends, um, have Zoom parties. We have a Zoom happy hour coming up with some friends that we were supposed to be doing a potluck with. Um, just keep connecting because that connection helps your whole immune system transform. So don't let anyone frighten you into thinking that you have to literally energetically isolate. And there's a massive power in 
connecting, and I know a lot of you already know this, um, and this may be new for some of you on the call, um, energetically connecting, doing long distance work with your clients, those of you who are healers, there is tremendous power in that, working all over the world. So, um, and then um, this is a separate thing, your labs are your scorecard. So this is part of the functional medicine. Your labs tell us, you know, how well you're doing. And so, so that's what we do separately in the Rejuvenate My Brain. But here, um, most sickness happens in the dorsal vagal state. Yeah. So what um, Lisa is talking about is doing the parasympathetic work and that's the parasympathetic, parasympathetic, which you all know is into the rest and regenerate place. Yep. The dorsal vagal is the parasympathetic freeze when we get scared and we shut down and we go into, we were sh sharing our turtles lot yesterday, so I brought my turtles out. We literally go into turtle mode. Can you see my turtle? And it just pulls in and shuts down. And this is the place where we get sick. We go into collapse, brain fog, confusion, um, and then the cell danger response of the mitochondria kicks in and your whole, all your cells go into red alert. Yep. And what we're wanting to do is create this island where you know, that little reptilian brain can come out and see that it's safe and then start playing. And that's what creates a healthy immune system. Okay, so this is a review for those of you who um, perhaps missed this last time um, let's see where we go next yeah sickness occurs when the cell danger response which is the fear yep is activated then it becomes chronic and the healing cycle gets interrupted so what we want to do here is say um, really globally the world healing cycle has been interrupted and what we want to do is create these little islands, these little bubbles throughout the world. And I'm so thrilled that you are connecting with us here all over the world um, so that we create those bubbles that can then ripple out. Um, so we want that safety to get reestablished so that the healing cycle can complete and keep recycling over and over and over again everywhere, can replicate. That's a good word, isn't it? It's a good viral word, contagion. Um, so that's we're just going to do go into a little bit of um, history. These are the things that we cover in our. I'm just going to zip through this um, in the whole Rejuvenate My Brain program. Um, and I know some of you are new to the whole Rejuvenate My Brain program, so you may want to look at this um, later. All the things that we cover that are to do with helping your brain and therefore your immune system. Um, but here we're going to start. Let me see if I can shift, shift this. Uh, there we go. Oh. Maybe that'll do it. Okay. Um, and I know some of you um, are, you know, very medically oriented. Um, I was very shocked when I learned this history, and I talked about it on the radio show yesterday about 30 years ago. And it completely changed my paradigm of health. I'm just going to pause a second and see if anybody knows about the story. I mean, we've all heard of Louis Pasteur, yes? Yeah, give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Um, and do we know, do you know Béchamp? No, nobody knows Béchamp. Okay. This is because he got buried. So, um, I'm just going to do a pause and catch up with you guys. Okay. Um, are we okay so far? Any questions so far? Okay. All right. Great. Um, so Louis Pasteur, you all know, is credited for creating the germ theory. Credited for creating the germ theory. Yep. Which is, here's a bug, and then you go after it and then you kill it, which is antibiotics and vaccines and everything that um, is designed to go after one thing, one drug for one disease, which I know has helped, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. But if we go back to the 19th century, Louis Pasteur was a showman. And Antoine Béchamp 
was a microbiologist, and you can Google, um, and it's quite fascinating, Google Louis Pasteur versus Antoine Béchamp. And Béchamp was working on and researching some very, very important information. And it was about your, it was called your inner terrain, your inner immune system, your inner, um, well, yeah, T terrain means soil. Yeah. So it's like your inner immune system that keeps you healthy. And Pasteur was all about go after a bug. And because Pasteur was a showman and an orator, and he actually plagiarized Béchamp's work, he was the one that was acclaimed. He was the one that was followed. And Béchamp really died um, in uh, unacknowledged and unrecognized for the amazing research that he did. And the irony is that Pasteur on his deathbed said he actually renounced the germ theory and he agreed that Béchamp was right. So this is actually huge because, you know, big pharma, um, you know, many medical procedures are all based on going after the bugs. And if we step up, we go a step back and uh, I could completely acknowledge, you know, oftentimes that's very important when we've got something you know, extreme or dangerous or um, acute. But when we're at home, the things we can do for ourselves is to follow Béchamp and work on getting our immune systems and our inner environment as strong and healthy as possible. And that's really the foundation of most holistic medicine. Yeah. When we go underneath everything, it's about that inner environment. And yes, many times, you know, with holistic medicine, we've kind of been a bit brainwashed by conventional, I'll call it modern medicine, I'm going to call it, um, which is going after treating symptoms. So it's really a dance where we honor that the treating of symptoms can be very necessary at times. And at the same time, underneath, it's really important to be working on your inner environment. Okay? You're following me so far? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, great. Well done. Well done. Great. So if we go back to the sharing. Um, so now we know, yeah, that there was this, this war that happened and Pasteur won. Um, that some of the training that um, we did, my husband and I, when we were running our great big clinic, um, so this was 30 years ago, um, was then one of Béchamp's followers, and I don't have his name written down, but I'll spell it out. You may want to Google him, those of you who are into the science. His name was Enderline, E-N-D-E-R-L-E-I-N. -E and he followed Béchamp and did much further work on how we can help our inner environment. And they, Béchamp and Enderline, it's called pleomorphism. That's pleo, P-L-E-O, and then morphism, as in M-O-R-P-H-I-S-M. And so what we used to do um, while we're in, in our old center, and the old Meridian Center we used to have that some of you um, online know about, um, we actually had um, somebody, his name was Jeff Pfeiffer, on staff who used to look at people's blood under the, micro, um, the dark field microscope. And the work was very much based on Béchamp and Enderline. And what we could do was we could see what was happening with the blood cells. And we talked about this in the last call um, when I said, you know, I learned, I saw under the dark field microscope when somebody took sugar, it completely changed the inner environment and the white blood cells, which are part of the key you know, constituents of your immune system, shut down for five hours. Which is why I, I you know, one of the key things to start changing your inner environment is to reduce your sugar intake. Yep. So we'll go back to that later. So we've got these 
kind of heavyweights in history that you know, talked about something that was really, and, and I know some of you have heard me talk a lot about natural law. And we lost that connection to natural law by following Pasteur and becoming afraid of bugs and germs. And as Béchamp said, you know, we've got millions of germs, bugs, I won't call them germs, um, microbes, all around us. They are all around us, and yet we've been taught to be afraid of one germ. Yeah? So the importance here, the takeaway for you, is to come back to that inner immunity, that bubble we were talking about, what Shannon was talking about is holding, you know, knowing that you're protected and holding a higher frequency. And one, it's the frequency of your soul, and it's also raising the frequency of your physical body. So that we're talking more about health, more about wellness, and more about your inner environment and your inner immunity. And when we can trust that, we can weather all kinds of things. You know, um, because external energies cannot get in. So let me see. So after that long preamble, I'm welcoming you all. Oh, it still says my internet is unstable. Um, to this second episode on inner immunity. And now I've given you the perspective of how to look at all illness. Um, it's really, I hope that you're getting inspired to do whatever it takes to build your inner immunity and to share this with others um, because the power is in your hands. Yeah, I'm just really encouraging you to take back your power and from this place of claiming your power, it's where alchemy can happen and we can actually transform bugs and germs that may be harmful into energies that support us and help us. Which is, I, I know, quite a huge paradigm shift here. Are we doing okay with it? Anybody stuck? Anybody? No? Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, so your inner immunity, what I want to start with is, is the Chinese medicine term, and some of you know this. It's called Wei Qi. Um, so again, you know, the Chinese knew about this millennia, a couple of millennia ago, ago, and they knew about your inner protection. And they had herbs to support your Wei Qi, um, Tai Qi, Qi Gong, you know, everything to help you to create your own protective bubble. So what we're really doing in, in the modern day, what we're doing here today, and somebody is rattling papers, so please mute yourself, um, is kind of, you know, circling back to the ancient Chinese and saying, gosh, you know, you, you were right. And what is it that we can do to create, strengthen our Wei Qi? And what weakens it is holes, things that create holes in your immune system in your Wei Qi, in your defensive, protective energy, rather. Um, so what creates holes? Toxic emotions, you know, so right now, lots of toxic emotions, you know, when we're being told to stay inside and we can only be six feet away from everybody, and some people are saying 12 feet, and we're only allowed into a store, I think, Anne, you were telling me in England, what kind of one at a time, <sighs> and a colleague in, um, Puerto Rico, I saw he was uh, saying that he wasn't even, I, we talked about it on the last call, wasn't even allowed to get toys for his children when he went to the, um, the grocery store. Um, and all the playgrounds are being cordoned off. Um, and the hiking trails here, you're allowed to walk, but the campgrounds and the gathering sites have been cordoned off. So, you know, nothing like creating anxiety overwhelm. And fear so you know we're kind of checking the boxes for creating holes toxic trauma this can trigger for many of us old patterns you know it may go back as far as World War II or, or earlier if we're carrying in ancestral and generational trauma um, you know anything that wasn't safe this can be triggering yeah old patterns so if they come up just honor them those who, who, of you who know how to do your know, Touching exercises, and we'll do a little bit of that later. Um, you know, use this time. Um, another thing is that's huge environmental toxins. 
heavy metals, chemicals, plastics, radiation, Wi-Fi. Um, these are all things that weaken our immune systems. You know, some people are even saying that the 5G in certain places has been weakening the immune system and allowing the viruses to come in. Um, but you know, it depends on what your reality is. But just you know, honoring that actually there's tons of research for all these things: heavy metals, chemicals, plastics, radiation, um, food toxins. You know, genetically modified food, um, pesticides. All of these weaken our immune system, um, and it's especially by affecting the gut. And as you probably know, 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is held in your gut. So just this is where I'm really, really encouraging to take you to take really good care of what you put into your body and that your gut is virtually one cell away from the outside environment. So um, you know, again, this is meant to be a short little episode here, so I'm not going to go into too much, but we do go into all this in um, the Rejuvenate My Brain program. And also we... Um, some of you have already started, but um, others of you are just beginning. We do a detox program where we look at all these different things um, and walk you through how to clear this from your cells so that your cells are as um, vibrant and healthy and unburdened by toxicity as possible. And, and as you know, we hear this all over the news that we are you know, living in a chemical soup, a toxic soup, and we're doomed. And um, what I'm here to say is we're not doomed at all. There's tons of stuff we can do. And my job is to empower you and help you transform your health and your immune system and become as stronger, stronger and more vibrant than ever. And I guess that's my plug for the Rejuvenate My Brain program if any of you want to join but haven't. But now we're going into stuff that you can do directly. Um, Let's see. Oh, actually, we're going into some of the causes. I'm just giving you visual. Some of you who are really visual, when trauma gets frozen in time, and that's what allows the trigger in of um, fear or overwhelm or anxiety that then can weaken the immune system. So these are just visuals. I'm going to go through them fast because I don't want you to stay in this, but just to kind of let your you know your, your deeper sense get a. Uh, um, a sense of how important these pieces are for the immune system. Um, global anxiety, you know, I've got, this is, I've, I've got a picture of a woman for the, the women in the group. Um, um, what's happened to my men? I've lost my man. I've got a, a male too, but I've lost him. So sorry, men um, who are listening, but I've got the, the male version of this. Um, you know, often for the men, you know, if they're breadwinners, it's been very um, scary for them because they haven't been able to, you know, bring in the income that they need for their their families, um, and I know women too are doing this. So, you know, it, it's it's very stressful. Um, and here's the environmental stresses that's affecting us, um, and just you know, just weakening our immune systems on a day to day basis. Um, one of our, my um, mentors, um, actually I've spoke, spoken about him before, um, Dr. Daniel Weber, who's a botanical oncologist, he talks about in the olden days we used to get um, attacked by a bear, you know, maybe once a month. And nowadays, and this was before this pandemic, um, we'd get attacked, we get attacked, it feels like, about six times a day. So that means that our immune system, um, our cortisol just shoots up and then it goes down and then it shoots up again when there's more stress and then it goes down and that contributes to creating holes in the gut. And therefore, you know, I think you're following me now, holes therefore in the immune system and our defensive system. So we want to just keep, keep that in perspective that even before we were stressed as human beings and now we're getting triply stressed um, and then we go into total overwhelm and then it's like, oh God, it's way too much. And I'm seeing that happen a lot with people. Um, and then it's like resignation, like it's hopeless. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, should I? But, but yes, I mean, a lot of people are going through this. They get fed up, um, angry um, at all the limitations that we're having to go through. And then we get sick. Okay. So that's the downward spiral that's been happening massively um, globally. And, you know, I, my heart goes out to those of, you know, people who 
are very sick, those people who've already lost loved ones. Um, it's incredibly tragic what's happening. And if we can do our best to shift that dial, um, then it's up to us to do everything we can to do that. And it doesn't mean that it's blasting it from the rooftops because we'll probably get you know, squashed, um, but just quietly connecting, re reaching out, um, connecting to people we may not connect with much before, but now's the time. So this brings me back to you know, the power of our brains, the power of our minds and things we can do internally, which is actually what Rejuvenate My Brain is really all about. We honor the stresses and the toxins and then we start working with changing the patterns in the brain. So we're going to be doing some of that um, in this little mini um, second immunity episode. Um, for example, um, uh, I'm just going to pause here. I'm going to go back um, and come out of share before we go into solutions. Just checking. Okay. Um, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, you kept keeping up with me. Give me a thumbs up if you're keeping up with me. Okay. Um, and if you have any questions, doing okay? All right. Are you with me in the fact that we can transform our immune systems? Great. Super. Okay, then back we go. Um, actually, I think I'm just going to come here. So, so oh, we've got, hi Anne. Got, um, so, oh, I'm just doing what I want to do, and I'm just going to see if I find this. Let me see if I can find it. Um, that can I just ask those people who haven't muted to please mute because it is actually there's background noise going on and is I, there I yeah and I am finding it very distracting okay I am thank you okay okay so um, we, uh, on the radio show, we were actually talking, we were asked, I was asked to talk about the um, immune system from a biodynamic perspective, you know, which is going into that deep place, the deep sense of the fluids and knowing that we're part of nature. And so I used um, these four steps from my old book. It's very old and I see that Anne Connery is on the call, and Anne, you helped me edit it all those days, all those years ago. Thank you, thank you. And there are four key steps for the play formula. Okay, um, the first, so P L A Y. So write those down. Okay, um, and P stands for. Does anyone remember this? <laughs> Physical body? Yes, well done, Julianne. Absolutely. So P is your physical body. And what I do is I have people give themselves a hug. P for physical. Okay. And what we're doing, um, there are different ways uh, um, that I teach the play formula. And, and some of them are on the website, playformula.com, the playformula.com. But what we're doing here for the inner immunity is number one, first connect with your body and make sure that you're comfortable make sure that you're resourced and relaxed and you're going to do whatever it takes to help that happen and you know a lot of you who've done my other programs know about this but um, one of the easiest things we can do to get our bodies relaxing and come into a mindful awareness or i call it a bodyful awareness where you're checking in with your body uh, is to, some of you may remember, to do the three mindful yawns, okay? 
So let's all do that together because it's contagious to yawn. And these are tools they've done with brain science um, to really stretch and really slowly uh, letting yourself yawn. This is the contagion we want to spread across the planet because those yawns balance the brain. And I know you've heard me some of you've heard some of me say it many times. If you're really, really focused or you're really worrying and you step back and you yawn, you're coming more into your intuitive place and you move really, really slowly and you move your neck really slowly and it brings you back into a better perspective and it actually rests your brain and allows the neurotransmitters in your brain to regenerate. And the neurotransmitters and the healthy brain chemicals are what help your brain stay balanced and calm. And if we focus and worry too much, we lose that and we burn out. We burn out our brains. Okay? Yeah, Lisa. You're, talk, you're talking about purposefully stopping and yawning. What happens when we uh, instinctively do it? It's happened to me on Zoom calls, and, and I don't want to appear rude, but and then I think, well, maybe it's my brain trying to rejuvenate. So uh, how do you deal with that? Absolutely. You yawn. <laughs> okay. We, we've been taught that yawning isn't good. I don't know why, because we, well, I know I've said this many times, but it's important. So thanks for the question. Um, that there are all these centers in the brain, even with pain, there are five centers in the brain for pain. And I know you asked about pain yesterday, Lisa, um, that the yawning balances out. Yeah. It's like a radiator. If your brain gets occupied with too much worrying thinking, even if you're just doing your day-to-day -day work on your computer, every hour take a break and yawn. Yep. And three yawns are really important. And so we, remember we talked about and I hit see you. Um, dogs yawn, dogs and cats yawn. Yep. Um, birds yawn, which is surprising. Babies yawn in the womb from about 16 weeks onward. So this it's this really important. It's like taking the lid or, or the, the, you know, the valve off the pressure cooker and allowing the steam literally to come out. Um, so yesterday when we were uh, supporting Cheryl and I was attentive and I was listening and everything, but I just wanted to keep yawning. Great. And, and you stopped it, did you? I did. <laughs> All right. So here's where you practice. You might say, I need to yawn. And then that might start the whole group yawning. And when you're yawning, one, you're releasing all toxic stuff. Um, and this w really goes way back to the Greek doctors where they thought that the yawns were about letting go of evil spirits, actually. Um, so one, you're releasing toxic stuff, but two, you're dropping into this really lovely, deep space of relaxation where your body and your brain can rebalance. And it's not like we have to figure it out or do anything about it. Um, so, please yawn. If you're going to go today and you need to yawn, I'll be highly flattered. Any of you who need to yawn, I'll be highly flattered. Okay. Shannon. I just wanted to say that um, when we were visiting with you, I noticed you doing this yawn that was um, very, almost not a yawn. It was a really sweet, ah. <sighs> yeah, that sort of, it's like, you're, you're just taking a relax and it's just it's not, it's a more socially accepted kind of feeling oh, it's like you're just you know you had a different way of yawning when in front of people that was more like I'm not yawning because I'm bored I'm yawning because this is all so wonderful that's how I felt when you yawn oh well, thank you thank you yeah I guess you can kind of do a sigh yes Ah, it's that ha ah. and, and we talked about this yesterday when you know JP was meeting people you know his, his, his being met and it was that was a, a, let's call it a yawn sigh ah. yeah thank you Shannon there you go Lisa thank you yes hopefully we set up a ring of yawns so um as some of you know and I'm going to repeat this for those of you who knew 
the yawns, they've done this brain research and part of the, my excitement doing the, you know, the programs I'm teaching is to teach you, you know, the, the modern day word hacks so that we don't have to spend decades in therapy, yeah? that we've got tools that can cut through all kinds of old processes that we used to think could take, would take forever. And one of them is meditation. Yeah. And people are often amazed. Like, you know, when I was interviewed on the radio yesterday, it was like, wow, really? Um, this was yawns, three yawns every hour can actually be more effective than 20, 30 minutes of meditation. Daily meditation. And isn't that cool? Because when you've got business people who are really, really busy, they're not going to take the time to meditate for long hours you know every day but they will we can get them on board when they are uh, to yawn we can get them to yawn and if we just remember that um in the morning when we wake up you're just allowing this natural stretch to come in just like your cat or your dog or your child you know your baby often when they wake up they'll stretch and just know that this is normal healthy physiology and we've been conditioned to stop it because it's not polite just like lisa was saying so thanks for that yeah so that's an example of p yep we're just giving you kind of little examples to boost your immune system um, in a fun easy way who remembers what l stands for l which is the fire element laughter laughter laugh and love Yep, so it's the heart. So you put your hands on your heart. And anything that makes you laugh or feel that you want to reach out and connect opens your heart. That is going to boost your inner immunity massively. Yep. And I'm, I'm giving you the, the, the shortcut because, you know, you may not have time to read this. And it's, it is full of cartoons. It's actually full of cartoons um, for people who are too busy to, to any, even read a short little book. But uh, in a nutshell, anything that makes you laugh, and, and there is the science of when you laugh, what happens to your immune system? That's what it's called, boost your immune system in four easy steps. But I'm giving you the shortcuts here. So anything that makes you laugh or love, um, you know, what I do on Facebook is I'll try and post silly little videos if I find them. And somebody just before I got on came on, on my Facebook page and said, Susan, I came to your page for inspiration and I found it. So I hope you're not posting enough. I'm going to be re, re-inspired you know, to post more. But um, there, there's one and I, I think, I've, where have I got it? I think it's on, on my page. I couldn't share it in the birth dance group, um, but it cracks me up every time. Yeah, and, and that just every time, and Julian hears me laughing about something really ridiculous and he'll come out so we'll laugh together and there's something about laughing together. If you're on a Zoom call, watching something funny with a friend in another part of the world um, and you can do this on Zoom, which is great. I could pull up a video for you right now and we could all watch it together, for example. But when you're doing it together, that boosts your immune system doubly. Okay. Um, what's that? Shannon, let me, oh, um, Lisa, let me see if I can give you, speak of you, hold on. Can you sp speak, Lisa, and then we'll, you'll um, pop up as, I need This is a lovely video that was sent to me. Oh, children hugging, and I will send it to you via email if I can figure it out. Can you post it on, in our birth dance? Yeah, I can post it on the, on the group. Isn't that just precious? That's absolutely, yeah, they, <laughs> So notice all of you what happens to you inside. Thank you, Lisa. That's brilliant. Yes. It's like your mirror neurons when somebody in the group shares something joyful, which is why we love to start with celebration. Um, then everybody benefits. Let me see if I can get up. Oh, yeah. Everybody benefits. So yeah, wonderful. So that's a great example. Um, th there's one I've got. Um, I think it's on my Facebook where somebody sneezes. I don't know who did this. 
and immediately the cat, a real cat, goes around. Have you seen that one? Goes around and around in circles, crazy. <laughs> and then in comes the cartoon cat and fills himself full of all kinds of medication. And it's like every time I watch that, it's like, it cracks me up. So this is to inspire you. If you're a friend of mine on Facebook, post, if, if you're in any of our private groups, post so that we can keep each other laughing and connecting through our hearts. So that's L, that's great. Um, so let me see, got to um, remember what A is. It's green, it's the wood element in Chinese medicine. Awe uh, being an awe uh, and an amazement of the world. That's around. right, oh I love that, amazement. I've never used that before. Yeah, awe inspiring amazement. So you are stretching the envelope, yep. I mean, hopefully I've stretched your paradigm today with the story of, you know, Pasteur versus Béchamp. Yeah, we're stretching the envelope. Um, this is about you thinking bigger than where you are right now. If you're cramped and, and frustrated that you can't go out, you know, and, and do your celebrations and do your thing and go to your dance class or, you know, your gym, what we've got to remember that we're actually bigger thinking bigger what's our future like we're growing into our future and new beginnings um regeneration just all kinds of perspectives that keep us move us out of the old trauma patterns of the past that keep us stuck us stuck and keep our brains stuck and suckling yeah in, in the old patterns and we're stretching us ourselves and I know I keep saying this, this is because this is such a huge study about the immune system that, you know, the study they did in Florida um, with the HIV patients. Remember that study? Some of you are nodding. Yep. Um, where I'll tell, the, you know, those of you who are new, um, where the ones that knew that they were, it was, there was a bigger purpose for why they were sick, their T cells, which is a big part of their immune system, were 50% higher than the ones that were just saying, poor me, I'm helpless and powerless, okay? So these are great lessons that I wish the whole world knew about. And if we can share, you know, you can share, you know, to one client at a time, one community at a time, we'll be making a difference. Um, so that's a keep doing things that stretch you, okay? And then why? What? Does Y stand for? <laughs> it's true. With awe inspiring and amazing, we stretch out our arms just to really, really reach for the sky. Yeah. And with Y, we come back, it's you. Yep. So normally we say, you know, are you in it? If you're watching a funny movie, are you involved? Are you involved in your life or are you just a bystander? If you're a bystander, your immune system isn't half as strong as if you're living life to the fullest. Yeah? And even if you can't get outside and live life to the absolute fullest right now, it's about living it in your imagination. And they've actually done a study of, I think it was basketball players, where um, one group um, practiced, you know, shooting the ball um, into the basket, and they practiced in real, real time. Another group practiced in their imagination. And what they discovered was by the end of this little study that 26% of the one um, had, there was 20%, 26% improvement if they'd actually practiced for real. And the ones that practiced in their mind had a 25% improvement. So that's pretty huge. Oh, can you hear me? You can't hear me. Um. You, I think you also mentioned earlier about this was um, testing things, whether, whether it's good for me, how do I feel about it? Is it, is it, am I in it? You know, I'm, I'm, when I think about either choosing this or that, which, which one do I feel good about and which one do I feel may not be perfect for me? That wasn't that something? That, that yes, happened? that, that's actually the um, original formula. You're absolutely right. of the play formula. And that's what we do in life with everything. You know, if you want to do that, um, about something, should I do this or should I do that? And I know that you did that, practice that really well. Yes, a while back you told us. Um, and Julian and I do it all the time. Should we go here or should we go there? Um, and when we do the play formula, it becomes very obvious 
you know, we, we measure it, we rate um, it on a scale of one to five for the P, the L, the A, the Y, and we add it up and it adds up. Um, the max is 20. And sometimes if something is super thrilling, it somehow gets to a 25. Um, and if it's super awful, it can be a minus 25. Um, and anything that's above a 14, we say is, you know, worth, worth doing. It's even worth doing with a movie, yeah. Watching a funny movie. And right now, do not watch movies that are, um, um, cause you to go down in the dumps. Yeah, watch movies that are inspiring. Um, raise your frequency so that you can, because you've got, in a way, given what's happening right now, you've got to do triple, triple work on yourselves to hold that higher frequency because there is so much, so much downer information out there. So thank you, Shannon. Yes, yes. And, and I wasn't actually going into all the, um, the scale of one to five with this. I was just sticking with, you know, the immunity, but that is a very good way that you can really, you know, use this. Okay, so are you in it? What can you do for yourself? This is what I, how I'm using why right now. And um, so we've got a few little kitchen tips here. Um, I call them kitchen tips. Um, how do I? Okay. Um, let me see if I can get to them. So this. So, so here I, I brought in these because this is the level of play, pleasure, joy. You know, multicolored. It's like imagine you're in a cocoon right now. Um, we're all being cocooned and you're using this time to grow innerly so that you can emerge, that we can emerge as butterflies and transform. Yeah. And that there's all kinds of things that you can do for yourselves. There's all kinds of online stuff, um, check connecting with loved ones that rather than just, you know, spinning your wheels, um, I'm getting some amazing emails from people saying, you know, everything I'm doing right now is yummy. You know, I'm hanging out with my family, which is yummy. Never get time to do that because I'm usually working. I'm making amazing meals, which I never get time to do. Um, I know Mike, um, I know you're on the call. That you shared something lovely when I spoke to you a couple of times back that you were doing. Um, there's, so that there's just some magical stuff that can actually emerge and we need to hold on to that. So that's why I wanted you to get a sense of the butterfly transformational energy. It's not just rejuvenate my brain, it's transform my immune system. Um, let me see. So you can see we've moved out of the stress stuff and into the, um, the things we can do. The mindful awareness um, we've talked about, you know, and remembering mindful yawns um, that helps us come back into mindfulness. And I actually didn't say, you know, sometimes people can meditate too much, which means that they're too much in what we call the imagination network. There are these networks, um, this modern neuroscience is talking about networks rather than different parts of the brain. And the imagination network, if we meditate too much or spend too much day time daydreaming, it can push us into anxiety and overwhelm because we start to worry. So it's doing a dance between the mindfulness and the yawns and then coming back into focus and, and playing and just kind of, um, you know, rotating back and forth. And here's more mindful awareness. Um, and, you know, those of us who live near the beach, um, I know that I just talked to a, an MD colleague who is in emergency, used to be in emergency medicine. And he said he and his daughter, who is, um, in her third year of medical school in New York, I'm so glad she's out of New York, um, they actually, and he's in holistic medicine right now, um, they went for a walk on the beach in LA and it was the most crowded he's ever seen. Absolutely packed. So it means probably families are getting out and they are getting out onto the beach and they're enjoying the beach. Um, so that's, Stuff that you can do energetically and at a soul level and at a frequency level. Um, now I'm talking about stuff you can do for yourself, um, the why, the you. And we talked a lot about essential oils last time. And this comes from Aggie, um, one of our um, members. Um, we talked about thieves and the ingredients. They're recipes for thieves that you can make for yourself online. And Aggie was saying she couldn't find much online, but she found this. Um, it's a, 
a thieves vinegar that she thought was wonderful and she wanted us to know about. So thank you so much, Aggie. And those of you who are in our private group, um, you'll find the link um, in our private group. Um, let me see. Ah, oh, this is, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Um, so here's a little, and, and I'm aware we're kind of at the hour, but just, just a stuff I wanted to um, stress from last time, not to stress you out, but to emphasize um, that I've talked about immune boosters and bug busters. And immune boot, what people are saying on the internet is, you know, take masses of vitamin C or masses of colloidal silver or, um, you know, all these things that help with acute infection. And I just want to kind of issue a caveat because this is back to the ancient Chinese where you use certain herbs and tonics and procedures for boosting your immune system and to prevent infection and to keep your inner immunity or Wei Qi really strong. And then if you do happen to get an infection, that's when you take your bug busters. Um, and if you have Chinese medicine doctors, and I know Lisa, you were saying you had a good herbalist where you are, um, they know very well what the difference is. Yeah? Um, but the, the problem is if you take bug busters, and I'll tell you a little bit what, what they are, when your immune system is just, you know, you just want to keep it smooth and balanced, then you're causing the immune system to overreact. And this may sound a little complicated, um, but it's important. So, for example, you know, we, we talk about vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is great in balance, yep. If you have too much sunshine, then you can burn. And if you have too little, it's not good for your immune system and all kinds of other um, all kinds of other functions in your body. So we want that, that nice, easy balance. Vitamin C, you don't take huge amounts of vitamin C during peacetime. We'll call it peacetime. Um, you might take a little bit because, yes, our body needs vitamin C, and you mostly get it from you know, fresh fruit and veg. Um, but when you go, if you get an infection, that's when you leap into gear and take your liposomal vitamin C or you know, if you have a friendly holistic MD, your IV vitamin C, which is what they've been doing in Shanghai in China, that's highly uh, government accepted for the virus, the coronavirus. Um, let's see, astragalus is wonderful for the immune system, astragalus extract, root, yeah? Very good for boosting the immune system, supporting the immune system. You can get great teas. I think we talked about jade screen last time. Um, but you don't take astragalus um, during an infection because what it does is it's actually tonifying your immune system and we don't want it to tonify the bugs. Um, Bupleurum, um, what others? There's all, all kinds um, that I, I won't go into complexity here, but um, you know, those are just examples of things that people have been taking. So colloidal silver, wait until you need it. You know, hold off on these extreme things. Zinc even, zinc, yes, general low dose, you know, daily dose. Um, if you get a, a bug or a flu or a sore throat, zinc, lo lozenges, for example, you can take every two hours um, for a couple of weeks, that's it. You don't take it at high doses all the time. So I just want to kind of, you know, that's a caution because you may be getting these, you know, messages all over the internet and going into overdrive, don't. Just stay balanced and calm and you know, just save these bug busters for when you really need them. And I, I, I think I talked about ginger, fresh ginger. Um, raw ginger is a great bug buster. Um, when it's cooked over five minutes, then it's an immune booster and it tonifies your digestion and your lungs and keeps you, you know, helps keep you healthy. Okay, so that's kind of a little... Um, little piece about that and let me see um here are some good th this is what i recommend actually i'm re it's recommended reading for my whole rejuvenate my brain program um and these are ways that you can actually start changing your brain and changing your frequency based on tons of research um norman doidge he's been around for a long time these these are actually pretty old books um but you can find their latest stuff on YouTube. There are YouTube clips. 
and Norman Doidge basically um, discovered that, oh, I know, that, that, that there's a lot of history here, but I'll kind of just keep it really brief, um, that he, actually, my husband met on an art tour. He, he took a, a one-week art tour, um, and he met this woman who had had a stroke, and he didn't, wouldn't have known it except when she started to tell him about the work of Norman Doidge and how she was able to regain her health and the use of her arm because of the way that she retrained her brain. And Norman Doidge is a psychiatrist and he has taken um, the work of some other, the, some prior scientists and made, taken it to go mainstream. Um, so if you haven't heard of him, then I hope that you know, we're making it go a bit, bit more mainstream um, because of the power of what you can do to change your brain. And one of the, I, I'm kind of slowing down here because I may be giving you too much to take in. I want you to, to be able to pause and digest this, the power of this. Yeah. Because this is really um, what the play formula is, is based on, is how we change our brain to boost our immunity and change our health, transform our health. Um, so he's got some very powerful stuff. Um, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, and anyway, there's, there, there's some great stories here. Um, another guy is Joe Dispenza. Some of you may have heard of him. He actually broke his spine when he was cycling and he was told he would probably be paralyzed. And when he was motionless, he actually visualized his whole spine healing, which it did. Yeah. Um, and he's gone on to, he's a chiropractor. He's gone on to um, touch millions with his stories and the information that he has to share. Um, on the playformula.com, the playformula.com, you'll he, um, find some healing miracle stories. And coincidentally, um, one of the guys that is features in it, one of the Healing Miracle stories was um, contacted me on Facebook yesterday because he was sharing the videos that I took of him about 20 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Um, he was in a terrible motorcycle accident in England. And Agnes, if you're on the call, you may know him, Roger Hiodo. And he came to stay with us in Ojai. And he was immobilized. Basically, he said, and this was pretty profound, and you'll hear the story um, if you watch the videos. There are four videos. And then there's something I call the laws, the universal laws of healing. And he said when he was in the hospital, he was aware, he was unconscious, but he knew that the doctors didn't know what to do with him. They didn't know how to deal with him, and they basically had written him off. And because they let go of any preconceived notion, he realized that he could create whatever he wanted. And so even though he was immobilized, and I think he, the whole of his left side was paralyzed, I should actually watch the videos again because it's so powerful, he was able to work with transforming his brain and his body. And now he, he's married with a beautiful little, I, I think she's a teenager now, a little Anjou. Um, and he's doing fantastically. Um, so he reclaimed his whole life when he was told, he, well, th th there was no hope. Lisa, yes. Um, who is this person and where is that video? Um, for, his name is Roger Hyodo. H-Y-O-D-O. H-Y-O-D-O. You'll find him on YouTube, but the best place to find him is on theplayformula.com, my website, and go to Healing Miracles. And you'll find four little clips of Roger, and then part two is what I call the Hyodo effect, where his doctor, this was the, the neuroscientist, the, the neuro consultant in England, this was in England, when he was ready, this is really important, when he was ready to drive, get his driver's license, which is phenomenal, yeah, imagine that, um, the neuroconsultant had him try to do a movement 
with his hands that he had to be able to do. I don't know if you can see me. I'm going to stop the share. He was doing this. Yeah, he had to do this. And his brain couldn't do that. So the neuroconsultant said to him, okay, we're going to do this again really, really slowly. And I know that you can do it. And Roger's brain was going, I can't, I can't, I can't. And this is phenomenal. It's a true story. He's an amazing man. And the neuroscientist said, I know you can do it. So this is the power of us holding that frequency for our clients, for our families, for our community. And Roger had to stretch inside as that A, stretching, and go, he knows I can do it. I don't. And there was that scrambling or descrambling inside. And very slowly, he went inside, his brain figured it out, and he was able to do this movement. Pretty extraordinary. And from there, he went on and he passed his driving test. So this is the power of the brain. And that's really you know, kind of what I want to leave you with. Let me come back to the share. Um, and this is for, for those of you with who are part of the Brain Rejuvenate My Brain um, official program. These are really important for you um, because this is the basis of the work we're going to be doing with you and your physical health. Um, so Joe Dispenza, you know, he's very like Roger Hyodo. And then another one is Annie Hopper. Um, and she's written a book called Wired for Healing, where she had multiple chemical sensitivity. Um, she had electrosensitivity. She had to live on a, a rusty old, old and derelict old houseboat um, because she couldn't live in her home. She tried camping and then it got cold. This was in, in Canada. And um, so she had to be in this houseboat with her little dog. At least she had some mini community. And she just researched, researched, researched because she knew that she couldn't live like that. Um, so she couldn't eat food. She couldn't do anything, couldn't sleep, highly anxious. Everything was wrong with her immune system. And she um, called on people like Norman Doidge and Joe Dispenza and Dispenza and did her own research and has created an amazing program. Um, and again, you can Google her and find all these stories about people who've actually changed their brain and transformed um, their limbic system dysfunction. And when the limbic system gets damaged um, from fear and trauma, then, um, or chemicals or toxins or emotions, um, then it can start reading symptoms in the body um, or reading outside circumstances as being dangerous when really it might not be. And then it, you know, your brain, we, we teach the brain how to come back, back, back into a sense of stability and calm where the immune system can actually heal. So I'm just hoping that I'm giving you kind of all kinds of, you know, maybe it's a little more than you bargained for, um, but all kinds of um, resources to inspire you. And those of you who are wondering when we're going to get on to, you know, your private call, um, this is the foundation of the Rejuvenate My Brain program. So it's relevant to all of you as well. And I think this, I think I have a final thing for, oh, yeah, no, Joe Dispenza here. If you are not defined by a vision of the future, you are left with the memories of the past. Yeah, and these are his books, Change Your Mind, Change Your Life, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Um, that takes us back to the A, the awe-inspiring. You have to keep dreaming, imagining, envisioning, you know, who you are now, yeah, as opposed to being um, left with the memories and recreating what, what I call the old trauma grooves. Um, we want you to create the joy grooves and shift into a much more joyful future now. That transforms your immune system. And let me see, we've got Annie Hopper. She, hers is Wired for Healing, Remapping the Brain to Recover from Chronic and Mysterious Illnesses. Um, so again, all these are much bigger than the germ theory to, to come full circle back, much bigger than the germ theory. And um, oh, so where is my, I've got the final one that I want to share with you, the final, let me find it. 
And while, while you're waiting for me to find my final slide, just um, take a couple of moments to write down what the key things, yawn, do a couple, two or three yawns, and that brings you back into your intuition. And then write down a couple of things that, that your brain is telling you um, that are the key things that you're taking away from this immune system talk today. Ah, oh, here we go. Now I found it. Thank you for your patience. Let's see if I can get it. Um, actually, what, why don't you tell me, anybody, a couple of shares um, before I go into my final. Um, Mike, you want to share something? Unmute? Yes. Mike. Welcome, Hi. Mike. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for the invite, doctor, and thanks for having me. Um, so, the first thing that came to mind are what we're dealing with now and, and what we're always dealing with are external influences. Um, so, and what we control between these things is extremely important. And, and the, these practices, these, um, these hacks that you just spoke about are, are great. And um, I think making sure that we, we remember that these are outside influences and, we don't need to let the outside affect the inside. We have control of what's here and what's here. So thank you. Absolutely. Bravo. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else that want to share? Julianne. I would like to share. Uh, last, yesterday, yesterday evening on the call, I was telling you that um, I was working with uh, the audios um, on our no and filling up, and which was very intense for me. And then we had the live call, and um, so I had uh, the last six days about. Uh, I had uh, an allergy in my upper chest here. I uh, I have a home dust allergy. Allergy. So, so I, I I don't. I'm not sure. I'm just going to turn you up, Julianne. I think you said you had an allergy in your upper chest. Is that right? Yeah, a home dust allergy. A dust uh, a what? A what allergy? A dust, home dust allergy. So when I am cleaning, then oh. dust comes and, and then I often go, uh, become sick when I am doing too much. Uh, when I'm doing too much. And this was uh, the last few days I felt not good here because my allergy was starting and I was thinking, oh, I, I have to take cortisone spray because it will not go away on its own. So then, then we had yesterday the talk and I was working with, with this um, audios and this morning I had time and I was lying on my sofa and just being, uh, letting uh, integrate all the experiences from yesterday and in between I was thinking about my chest here because I was telling that my chest somehow opened yesterday something what was always not open and uh, when I was lying and letting flowing uh, everything and feeling the middle line from uh, below to above and but I was thinking between oh I have to take cortisone but then I felt more and more uh, in this fluid uh, being, my chest became free. So that was, uh, I was not um, working with my brain or something like that, it happened just so that I knew, suddenly I knew I don't need cortisone this time. I am free and I am happy again. So that was really wonderful. Wow, thank you so much. That's fantastic. So just in case no one, people didn't hear that. So Julian, I'm just going to kind of repeat back. So you have 
had, I'll call it, this allergy to house dust. Yep. And when you're cleaning and your chest was getting really tight, so you thought you were going to have to take cortisone, which we call steroids over here. Yeah. Um, which is you know, quite intense. You know, that shows how tight your chest must have been getting. And that with you doing your work, and not specifically on your chest yeah, or your allergies, Yesterday, you were noticing that your chest was opening up and that you didn't need to take your cortisone. Is that right? Yeah, tomorrow when I was integrating. When, when you were I integrating. Was, uh, this morning. This morning. Uh, I felt it. So I'm here. Great. Fantastic. So that's your immune system. Yep. As you're clearing and that chest, remember what we did yesterday? We did, we were working with the upper chest and the lungs, the respond and reach out piece. Yep, so that was old trauma patterns that you were working through that could open up your chest so that it can, it can begin to heal. Yeah, I am very thankful. Well done, brave, well done. Thank you for sharing that. And, and just notice the rest of you, you know, when Mike shared and Julianne shares how you feel inside. Because when one person benefits, everybody benefits. And this is collaboration. Yep, it's not competition. It's not isolation. It's about connection. And that's how we heal and how we heal our planet. Great, thank you so much. So I'm gonna to shift to the, the final piece to let you guys go, those who need to go. Um, um, let me see, and I think you'll appreciate this. I'm glad I found this. This came from, um, Actually, a friend of Roger Hiodo's, and I don't know if Agnes will know him, her, her name is Susan Byron from Germany, um, and it's, it's done by a German guy, and you'll find us on my Facebook page, but in, uh, and I don't know if it, that you can really read it, but um, in, in a time of COVID-19, I'm going to read it for you, but I think you can read it too, you know, instead of shelter in place, <laughs> become an artist in residence. Now, th this is how we're reframing using our brains, yep. Instead, we're shifting from fear to joy. Instead of quarantine out of fear for self-protection, we go into quarantine, yeah, it takes a team to regenerate our planet, out of concern for health, collective well-being. So here we are today connecting as a team, yep, a, a joy team. Instead of social distancing, yes, we are physically distancing, but anything we can do to connect with each other you know, and send hugs down the, down the line um, is really important, that we are not socially disconnecting. Um, instead of isolation and loneliness, let's treat it as solidarity, which we're doing today, and solitude, yeah, which is good for the soul. And instead of economic collapse, which I know the media has been talking a lot about, Let's talk about ecological renewal and how we can transform our amazing planet to be healthy and strong, all of us together. So you'll find this on my Facebook page. And if you're not a friend of mine, feel free to friend me. And um, thank you, all those of you who've joined us for our immunity um, episode. I'm going to say goodbye. It feels a bit weird to say goodbye to you. Um, <laughs> yes, bye. And then those of you who are part of the Rejuvenate My Brain, um, we'll keep going with um, Q&A until one o'clock. Okay. All right. Yeah. So bye, Julianne. Bye, Brian. Bye. Okay. Okay, uh, those of you who are left, and I, I know Agnes might come on back on in a bit. Oh, we've lost, um, we've lost Anne. Uh, Julianne, are you joining my program? Uh, uh, but uh, I did not understand you. Oh, are you joining us for, we're moving, I, I'm actually going to stop the recording.